For many women, you might even relate to this. Having a glass of wine with friends after a long week is totally normal. Maybe you go to a happy hour. Maybe it's a regular occurrence. In fact, more and more women are enjoying alcohol, but more and more women are also becoming addicted to alcohol as well. So how much is too much when it comes to women, our bodies, and alcohol addiction? Joining us now, Dr. James Walsh from Swedish Medical Center, just to shed some light on women and alcohol this morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, it seems like we do live in a world now where um, the consumption of alcohol and women, you know, women drinking wine or women out with their friends, it seems like that is more accepted. Could that be leading, you think, to an increase in, in, in women and our alcohol consumption? Probably so. I mean, gender roles have certainly changed and expectations of norms are a little different. Mm -hmm. We saw a similar experience with cigarettes, which in the early part of the 1900s was not normal for women. And as cigarette smoking increased, harms that related to cigarette smoking also increased for women. So we were talking a little during the break and you were saying that it kind of depends on your metabolism as well. The, the way alcohol affects women versus men, it's, it's very different. Yeah, both for, for liver and stomach metabolism as well as for just general body weights, women are more sensitive to an equal amount of alcohol. Um, in, in general, uh, the effect of alcohol can be increased 30 or more percent for women compared to men. Wow, that's yeah. pretty incredible. Um, so we uh, were just talking, chit-chatting, and, and I, I just had that question. I mean, how many times have you heard someone maybe at work go, oh my gosh, it was a long week, I need a drink? Uh, and, and that's kind of funny, you know, sometimes. But at what point does that moment maybe turn into an issue with alcohol. Where is that line? I think there's two ways to think about it. You know, preventatively, we know that harms from alcohol are related to quantity, whether that's developing alcoholism or, or having health problems from alcohol. Mm -hmm. And for women, drinking more than three drinks a day is associated with, a, not, not just every day, but occasionally, more than three drinks a day is associated with an increased risk of harm. And drinking more than seven drinks a week is equally, you know, kind of cumulatively over the week associated with increased risk of harm. So the idea of women drinking this amount of alcohol seems to be uh, becoming more and more common because uh, the, the, the gender gap between mm -hmm. alcohol consumption in men and women, it's narrowing a little bit, especially here in Washington State. Yeah, I was looking back at CDC data that they've collected for our state. 20 years ago, binge drinking, more than three drinks a day for women, was around 6 to 7% mm -hmm. of women were doing that. Now it's more like 12 or 13%. For men, it's been more in sort of the 18 or 19% range more consistently over that time. I mean, that's a pretty big jump from 6 to 12%. Mm -hmm. that's, that's huge. Why do you think this is happening? I mean, it's really hard to know. I'm not an epidemiologist, but, yeah. but advertising probably plays a major role, both targeted and in general. Accessibility and availability plays a role. But there was a change in our state where alcohol was sold in you know, liquor stores, and now it's sold in, in sort of general commercial venues, and that makes it easier for people to access larger amounts. So what do you do when you get to that point and say, okay, maybe I need to take a step back. Maybe it's me, or maybe you notice a family member. Um, what do you do next? I mean, for the, well, you know you're having a problem with alcohol when you're having sort of some sort of loss of control. Drinking more than you think you should. Drinking when you're sort of aware that it's uh, causing some harm for you. The hardest part for people is telling somebody. If you're brave enough to talk to a spouse, a family member, a pastor, a doctor, there's a lot of ways to move forward and make a change. But for people, that's really, really scary just to start yeah. the conversation. And, and that was actually that was actually going into my second question. What if you're that person trying to have that conversation with a loved one that you think may have an issue? What's the best way to break the ice there? I mean, in, in the end, you just have to just jump in and, and, and say, speak your concern. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's. I think there's a temptation to say that you shouldn't do it. It's much more helpful to say, I'm concerned about, or I perceive this, or I'm worried about you. People really respond to that kind of affection and love. And many people I've seen who've managed to get a, on top of their alcoholism, it's been because a family member spoke to them and started a conversation. And I think that's key because I know we talk so much, especially now, you know, we talk about the heroin epidemic and mm -hmm. all these uh, different kinds of addictions that are going on in our state right now. I feel like we don't talk a lot openly about alcohol addiction, uh, the health problems, the risks. I mean, they're there. They're huge. Yeah, I think that's really smart. You know, illicit drugs kind of come and go in our culture as, as availability and, and familiarity changes. But alcohol and cigarettes still probably cause more harm than any other drug. And those substances have been persistent. Yeah. And they're legal. Yeah. to get, which yeah. is uh, even more interesting. Thank you, Dr. James Walsh, for being on our show this, uh, this morning. Thank you. My pleasure. Great insight. Yeah.